Hello, everyone, and welcome inside the CIF. I'm your host, Richard Tiemann, and this is your Game of the Week preview for week number 11 of the 2021 CIF season. And as I'm sure you've noticed by now, I'm still in the process of getting moved into Omaha, Nebraska. Another set change and backdrop behind me. This is the kitchen setting. But anyway, enough about me. Let's take a look back before we preview this week's big matchup between the Omaha Beef and the Dodge City Law. Week 10 saw a couple of really good matchups, including the game of the week, which featured two teams desperately trying to keep their playoff hopes alive, when the Wyoming Mustangs hosted the Sioux City Bandits for the first time ever. Final score from Wyoming, the Sioux City Bandits snap their four-game losing streak and come out with a big W, 35-18. to Then we also had action in Salina Liberty, where the Liberty hosted the Dodge City Law while the Beef were on a bye week. That one went down to the wire, only a seven-point difference, and you just didn't know until the clock hit zero. Final score, 61-54. Salina remains perfect on the season. This week features a pair of teams fighting for the number two spot in the CIF standings right now, and there's still just enough season left where there could be plenty of movement for the two, three, and four seeds come July. However, we have the Omaha Beef coming fresh off their bye week and Memorial Day weekend, where Dodge City is coming off of yet another tough loss to the Salina Liberty. Omaha and Dodge City will meet again later on this season, but it will be Dodge City that comes to the slaughterhouse in Omaha. So this one really means a lot right now as far as not putting so much on that game. Joining me today to help preview this big matchup, we have defensive lineman Carl Bivens from the Omaha Beef and kicker Brett Mathis from the Dodge City Law. So let's go ahead and preview the Week 11 Game of the Week. All right, CIF fans, first up, representing the away team, he is a defensive lineman for the Omaha Beef who put up probably one of the best stat lines we've seen all season for a defensive player of the week. He is Carl Bivens. Welcome, Carl. How you doing? Doing great. Glad to be here. Yeah, man. Um, you guys are fresh off of a bye week, a Memorial Day weekend, bye week at that. How you feeling? You feeling good? Yeah, rejuvenated. Uh Got in the gym a little bit, spent some time with my teammates, you know, just tried to recover. So I'm feeling pretty good. There you go, man. Well, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of R&R. You guys are coming off of one of the best defensive performances as a whole all season. You guys were a nightmare for the poor (laughs) Wyoming quarterback. But now a bit of a tougher test. This will be the first of two that you guys play Dodge City. This will be the away game. Then you guys will host the law. But this is the battle for number two right now. How you feel going into this game? You know, Dodge City's a team that I feel like gets slept on a little bit. Uh, they have a nice, they have a really nice run game once they get it going. So that's been our main focus. Uh, I feel like defensively, especially on the D line, we want teams in passing situations because all of our guys specialize in pass rushing. So, uh, yeah, just stopping the run and just trying to play together as a unit for four quarters has just been the main focus. Yeah, I started off the season uh, kind of a tale of two bye weeks. Uh, first part of the season, you were one and two headed into the first one, and that one being against a non-league opponent. But since then, you've won three of your last four, uh, two being on the road, and then finally that elusive home regular season win against a CIF opponent. Uh, what do you feel is really starting to click for you guys lately? Well, you know, with the whole COVID situation coming off of that, uh, a lot of people were new. Uh, the coaching situation changed. Offense has changed. Defenses, personnel has changed a lot. So I think we're finally just getting into a groove of, you know, the guys just coming together and understanding who they're playing with and understanding how to beat the guys that we're playing against. And that's just sticking together and just doing what we can't really do. What's your favorite thing about the defensive unit there at Omaha? Is that when we get guys on their heels, man, it's beautiful. You know, like once the defensive line can pin their ears back, uh, we apply pressure on the quarterback. He's going to throw something up and the DBs are there. So, you know, that's that's our uh, favorite situation to be in. We're never in a we never feel like we're in a bad situation, you know, but that's that's the one that we want to be in. 
Now, I know you guys love playing in front of the hometown crowd because they can really, you know, get into a frenzy. And we heard that at the last one, especially with the performance you guys put on for four quarters. But some of you guys, you really love going on the road because it's the hostile environment, the hush of the crowd. If you guys are doing really well, which one do you prefer, home or away? Uh, I mean, of course, I'm going to take home, you know. I'm gonna take on. It's it's different from playing outdoors because the fans are nicer when you go other places, you know. So it's really not that bad. And I get maybe we're just likable, but it's something about being at home and you know you don't gotta hop on a bus right after, you know. Yeah, I think you're very likable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well. For you, looking back at that last win, uh, it seemed like all three phases of the game were really, you know, just starting to gel well together. Special teams, offense, and of course that defense, as people are starting to call it right now. But for you, when did you really start to feel it that game on the defensive side? Um, probably the the second drive. The second, the first drive, we got a three and out, or a turn. No, we got a turnover in, in our red zone. But the second drive, you know, offense put up some points. So we were just like, it's time to go. They stopped running the ball as much. They started passing. And like I said, that's the situation we want to be in. So, Well, it's going to be a bit of a longer road trip. I mean, it's not 12 hours like Wyoming was, but it's not three like Salina is. It's right in between. What do you have to do to get yourself as far as your mind right and your body right uh, to get off of a bus and then go and uh, compete for second spot in the playoffs right now? I'm real simple. Uh, I just need a big bottle of water, some headphones, a uh, bag of cheetahs, and I'll be all right. What's your go-to song on your playlist? Uh, it's a new one. It's called Seeing Green by uh, Lil Wayne, Drake, and Nicki Minaj. So that's what I'm liking right now. There you go, man. Well, of course, the last question, the most obvious, what's it going to take to beat the law? We got to come out and just do what we've been doing and, you know, keep going on the path that we've been on, which is meshing together and playing together as a team and just a certain dominance when we can. You know, a lot of times we might end up, coach says that we play down the, our opponents, but we got to come out and dominate when we had a chance to just keep our foot on their throats and just keep it going until the end. And I feel like we're going to come out with a win every time. I love the confidence, man, and fans, once again, he is Carl Bivens. Him and the Omaha B-Fence, as well as the rest of the beef, are going to go on the road in the first of two against the Dodge City Law for second spot in the standings. Uh, if it holds, you know, the winner of this one could be hosting a playoff game, but uh, 0-0, one week at a time. And, uh, Carl, I thank you so much for your time uh, for being here on the Game of the Week preview. All right, I appreciate you. All right, man. Hey, uh, safe travels and best of luck in the game this weekend. All right, fans. Next up, representing the home team. He is the man they call Das Boot, but I just know him as Captain Uno. He is the kicker for the Dodge City Law, who set a CIF record for Uno kicks at three of them. It is Brett Mathis. Welcome, Brett. How you doing? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me on the show. I definitely appreciate it. I've been watching it every week. So to finally be honored to be on your show. Thank you very much for having me. You know, I figured it was as good a time as any because normally people want to hear from quarterbacks, linebackers, DBs, wide receivers. And of course, you know, I believe that kickers need love too. But really, man, uh, last few weeks, you've been having uh, some really awesome stats. You got uh, special teams player of the week last week. As I mentioned, there was a CIF record, three Unos, and they were all in the second half alone. I mean, like, walk me through what, I guess, came over you to have such a great performance. And your PATs and field goal attempts were good also. Yeah, well, it's just one of those things. Like, I know when these guys are out here, the offense and defense, that's what a lot of people will just see. But sometimes it's special teams is what solidifies the game, is what really takes control and I can't, can't say enough about my uh, line in front of me as well as my holder. Like, it's a full team thing. Like, just as much as it's what did I do for it? No, it's it's the fact that we were able to go in at halftime, refocus, and then come out and have that great game against Wichita. And then also then to have that carry on into Salina. And we're really looking forward to having all three parts of our game, special teams, offense, and defense this week, really coming out and having a big show for us in Dodge City. 
Yeah, you guys are right there on the bubble of uh, number two as well as Omaha, which is why this is the game of the week between you and the beef, the battle for number two. Number two hosts a playoff game when the time comes for the postseason. How big would that be for you guys, especially given all the adversity that you've had to overcome as a team? Oh, that would be huge for us to have home field advantage and having that opportunity to play in front of our home crowd, play in front of the arena that we're now finally getting used to, getting comfortable with. Because, again, as you as you know, as well as anybody in this league, for us, this has been a complete roller coaster. But every time, every week, we're just rolling with the punches. And I think if we are able to secure that second place uh, playoff position, oh, that would set us up for a real good roadmap for the playoffs. Well, as you guys get ready to host the Omaha Beef, um, and you guys will play them in Omaha later on this season, so there could be just as much on the line uh, with that meeting as well. But if you guys get the win this weekend, obviously things are in your favor. Uh, You could split the series, but uh, that's a whole bunch of scenarios that we don't have to get into right now. What I really want to know from you, though, is uh, with everything that happened before the season started and just how quickly everything changed, you were supposed to be in Enid, Oklahoma, playing as the Flying Aces. Now you're three hours away as the Dodge City Law, which was a team that wasn't supposed to uh, return until next year. And after all of that, you guys still very much control your own destiny as far as the postseason goes. But what is it that uh, would you say is the glue that holds this team together week in and week out? It's honestly our accountability of one another. These guys on this team, you can ask 1 through 21 why they're here. And we're all here because we're each other's brothers. We're looking out for each other and we're bought into this program. And that that's ultimately what's going to, when you look at key successes dating back to as long as this league's ever been, where does where does the true winning coming from? That unity. And that's something that looking at a lot of other teams, that that's something that I don't think many other teams can compete. It's just the unity, the the fact that we've been through all these trials and tribulations, um, starting out with the Oklahoma Flying Aces, then transferring over, that a lot of these guys is patience, but no one's been what we've been through. And so we look to each other and we only can lean on each other. And so that's that's probably the biggest thing that I see about Dodge City, that how have we been able to do it is because everyone thought we couldn't. And so we're just one day at a time. We just keep proving that we're still here and we're still in this fight. Yeah, it's crazy to think you guys tied with the beef three and three as far as in conference. They have one more win overall, but it was, of course, one of those non-league matchups at the very beginning of the season, which you guys did not have. So uh, as far as the standings go and your record, it's as true and honest as any team's record can be in the CIF right now. And you guys have been battle tested both home and away. And uh, I don't know if I could make heads or tails of this team for a while, but here we are. You know, we've got just a, a few more games left. And now it looks like Dodge City might be the second best team in the league. How does that make you guys feel there in the locker room? Um, I think we all are aware of the talent that we have in this locker room. We're aware of the guys that are here. And we think that we can take that and put that onto the field and get some real big wins here at the end of the season. And then also take that momentum into the playoffs. There's, there's literally nothing that you could say, Rich, that I don't think we can achieve. Perfectly said, man. So what do you think? Special teams is going to help you guys win this one? <laughs> oh, special teams. If Dust Boots in the game, special teams is going to be interesting. But it, it's all fun and games. It's, it's great. I think special teams is, needs to be included in this game. Um, I think the opportunities where people take special teams out now, it's, it's a crowd pleaser, gets the energy going. We need to bring more special teams back. So I love the opportunity. And special teams this week is always going to be important, but it's important every week. It's week in, week out. If it points on the board, that makes a difference. (laughs) All right, folks. Once again, kickers need love, too. And he is the man they call Das Boot, Brett Mathis of the Dodge City Law. Thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. All right. Appreciate it, Rich. Signing off. Have a great night. You too, man. Good luck this weekend. And one more big thank you to Carl and Brett for joining me on this edition of the Game of the Week Preview. Don't forget, if you can't attend the game, you can watch it live on the CIF Network channel on YouTube.com. That again is Saturday, June 5th. Kickoff is at 7.05 p.m. And there's also another game featuring the Wichita Force and the Wyoming Mustangs. That is a Monday night indoor football game. June the 7th kickoff is at 8 p.m. Central Time. 
So who will be the game of the week next time? You'll just have to tune in and find out. Until then, I'm Richard Tiemann, and this is Inside the CIF.